So I will uh, talk about the impact of soil surface sealing on uh, the coil hydrology of uh, semi-arid areas. And uh, uh, part of this uh, work is uh, under the PhD uh, study of Shai Sela, the contribution of Li Chen from the Desert Research Institute and Tal Sborai that now you all uh, know. And uh, as we heard about uh, uh, from the talk of Eve and from uh, Jeff and from Danny, soil surface properties are uh, very important as they control the partitioning between precipitation into infiltration, runoff, and they det determine also the dynamics and the intensity of evaporation process. And when we are speaking about, when we are considering a bare soil that is exposed to rainfall, then we see that the raindrops that are impacting the bare soil uh, surface, in fact, transfer kinetic energy and disturbs the soil upper uh, layer. And this uh, process alters the physical properties of this soil surface or the, the upper layer at the vicinity of the soil surface. And this process was uh, considered or, or uh, named the uh, soil surface sealing or soil surface uh, crusting. The effect of the uh, source of a ceiling uh, can be very severe in terms of agricultural, hydrological, and uh, environmental uh, aspects. We know that it decreases infiltration, it reduces ev available water uh, to plants, it diminishes thus the natural reaches to aquifers, it increases runoff and erosion, and it can also, uh, because the crust layer when it's dry is uh, stronger, it uh, affects seedling and plant growth. So Generally, a seal formation, when it uh, occurs, is considered as a process that <laughs> intensifies desertification. So the objective of this talk is to try to simulate the impact of uh, soil surface sealing on the main components of the hydrological cycle in, in uh, semi-arid environment. And the talk will present first the conceptual model of uh, uh, soil surface sealing. It will also look at the uh, impact of this uh, uh, particular la layer on the rainfall infiltration runoff relationship at the plot scale, uh, runoff plot scale. Then we will move a little bit to uh, hill slope scale and look at the impact on the water storage in the root zone. And finally, we will uh, end the talk. So the first experiment that showed that uh, this process uh, occurs in reality was made by Delhi in 1939. So you have a box of soil, uh, bare soil exposed to uh, 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 simulated rainfall, protected by a mattress of straw. And when you expose this soil uh, with this protection of the soil surface to uh, the rainfall, you see that the, the infiltration rate was kept more or less uh, constant. And then when you remove the soil protection, then the infiltration was uh, decreasing very uh, sharply. Now they stop the experiment. They remove the upper two inches of the uh, soil uh, surface. They uh, covered it with uh, some clo clothing. They exposed the new uh, soil without the soil surface, the previous soil surface to the rainfall. And then still we have uh, uh, a new, higher, uh, but uh, also constant uh, rainfall infiltration, uh, infiltration rate. And when you remove the protection of the soil surface, then you get again the drop, the, the, the fast uh, reduction of the infiltration rate. So from that experiment, they came out with the conclusion that something was happening at the soil surface that reduces significantly the, the infiltration rate when the soil was bare and the rainfall was uh, of high intensity. So if we want to model such a process, what do we have? We have initial soil hydraulic properties that generally we know we can measure. We know also generally the initial and boundary condition of the soil profile. So we master uh, the initial conditions of the undisturbed soil uh, system. <coughs> we can also know the rainfall physical characteristics, kinetic energy, intensity. And what we would like to know is what are the new hydraulic properties of the surface that are formed by the combination
relation between the rainfall and the initial conditions in the undisturbed soils in order to uh, simulate or determine soil surface fluxes like infiltration, runoff, and, uh, and erosion. How do uh, we do that? So first we have the rainfall physical condition. We need to know about the rainfall characteristics. They are uh, composed by two elements. One is the raindrop size distribution, which is a function of the rainfall intensity. Basically, it also depends on what part of the world you are making the measurement and what type of rainfall is uh, produced. But basically, the, rain, the raindrop size distribution is a function of intensity. And uh, for each raindrop, we have its terminal uh, velocity at the contact between the drop and the soil surface. From these two, we can determine the rainfall kinetic energy that is imparted to the soil surface. And it is also a function of uh, rainfall intensity that will change depending on the uh, location on the globe and the, the, the type of rainfall we, uh, we are uh, uh, considering. So, what is this altered surface? Here you have a nice picture, a very recent one on Ivaluma. We can say that if this is the unsealed uh, soil, the sealed uh, one, the sealed uh, soil has a more compacted uh, uh, upper layer. So the interaction with the raindrops, we assume that it increases the soil bulk density. So our uh, variable will be the soil bulk density. And we can also uh, assume that since we are speaking about the process of compaction and the process of uh, washing in of fine particles that are the result of this destruction uh, process, then we have also filtering of fine particles uh, with the movement of the water uh, in that. So from these two processes, compaction and filtering, we can assume that the disturbance will decay exponentially with that. So we end up with conceptual model where the disturbance is maximum at the surface and it decreases exponentially uh, with depth. And if we represent that in terms of bulk density, this is the equation we are using. This is the initial bulk density of the undisturbed soil. This is the maximum uh, disturbance at the surface, delta uh, rho. And we have here the exponential uh, decay uh, term. And all this uh, describe how for a completely formed seal, we had a, a exponential decrease of the bulk density uh, with depth until it merges with the undisturbed soil below. Uh, this was uh, validated experimentally uh, by Roth in 1997. He took s uh, fine slices, thin slices of uh, 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 soil that was exposed to rainfall until the infiltration rate was more or less constant and low. And you can see that for two types of soil, we have this exponential decay of the bulk density from the surface, which is maximum, down to the value of the initial soil, the undisturbed soil. And this took around uh, 10 millimeters in, in his experiment condition. Also, uh, Bresson et al. in 2004 looked at the same thing using X-ray uh, uh, radiography. And is, this is a picture of a thin slice, now a vertical one, of the uh, soil crust. This is the soil surface. We can see that we have also the exponential decay down to the upper 15 uh, millimeter where it merges with the undisturbed soil. So now, how do we model the dynamics of this uh, disturbed uh, uh, layer? We assume that we will uh, uh, model only the dynamics of the maximum disturbance at the surface and then propagate it uh, exponentially with depth. So this maximum uh, uh, disturbance at the surface here is a function uh, of one minus E with uh, a term that is a function of rainfall intensity, the, pulse, the drop size distribution and the terminal velocity, which is the kinetic energy and uh, some element that we call the, the soil shear, shear strength, which is representing the, uh, the way the soil is re resisting the destructive uh, impulse of the raindrop. And this is a function of the initial bulk density and the initial water content. So what we can now represent is the 
building up of the disturbance as the kinetic energy is impacted on the surface and increases the disturbance uh, during the rainfall so that we can have now a dynamic distribution of the bulk density with depth for a given rainfall intensity and with time. And from that uh, bulk density, we can infer the hydraulic properties of the disturbed layer, meaning the water retention curve and the hydraulic conductivity function. We, uh, with the help of uh, Benedict Ojar, uh, during her PhD, we could validate that the, the maximum uh, disturbance at the surface followed that assumed uh, uh, function. And you can see also that for a high water table or a low water table, which is a factor that's changed the uh, shear strength of the soil or the possibility of the soil to react to resist to the destructive impact of the raindrop, drop, we can get a different uh, uh, value. So uh, now that we have the distribution with time and with depth of the soil bulk density, we can assume, we can estimate how the uh, different parameters that are needed to represent the soil hydraulic properties can change with the change in bulk density. Here, for example, it's for uh, the Brooks and Corey uh, relationship. So we have the porosity or the saturated uh, water content changing with the bulk density, the residual water content, the air entry value, and the lambda index. And uh, also how the, sat the saturated hydraulic conductivity changes. And from all these uh, expressions, we can reproduce how the hydraulic properties of the upper layer are evolving with time for a given uh, rainfall until the seal is, uh, or the, the, the upper layer is completely uh, reached some uh, steady state or some final uh, uh, destruction. And you see here the hydraulic, uh, the water retention curve very close to the soil surface and compared to the undisturbed soil and also the hydraulic conductivity function close to the, very close to the soil surface compared to the undisturbed soil. So once we have the determined the hydraulic properties of the disturbed layer, we have a heterogeneous profile that have a maximum disturbance at the surface that propagates and decays exponentially with depth and we have the remaining part of the soil profile, uh, which is the undisturbed uh, soil that was exposed previously to the rainfall. So we can check and in fact calibrate the dynamic model using uh, uh, data of infiltration. So we solve the Richard equation and uh, we can represent the infiltration rate for the unsealed soil, the homogeneous undisturbed uh, profile. And we can also uh, using the infiltration data uh, of the uh, soil that is exposed to the rainfall and that goes uh, uh, as soil surface sealing, we can reproduce and uh, illustrate the drastic impact on the infiltration rate from this uh, building up of this uh, layer. And we can also check the, the model, validate it against data from different uh, rainfall events using different rainfall intensity and different rainfall kinetic energies. And we see that the model now, this is predictions, predict quite well the infiltration uh, rate uh, change with time for a different rainfall intensities and even is able to predict that for a higher rainfall intensity, we get a more permeable, permeable uh, sea layer uh, that for some uh, reasons was like counterintuitive. Uh, we can also uh, look at the effect of this uh, building up of uh, this sea layer at the surface on uh, bonding rainfall excess and runoff. Uh, if we uh, plot the rainfall, the cumulative, the rainfall rate versus the cumulative rainfall, this is the blue line, and we plot on the same uh, uh, figure the infiltration rate versus the cumulative infiltration. So you have your rate, which is all rainfall or infiltration. You have here cumulative depth can be all rainfall or infiltration. We can reproduce for the infiltration 
of the end, in the end sealed case, the contact point, the crossing point here, which is the ponding time, and all this area will be the rainfall excess. And when we consider infiltration under surface sealing condition, we see that the ponding time is much more uh, uh, shorter, and we, we have much more uh, rainfall uh, excess. That means that the uh, soil sealing will create uh, more uh, runoff. And this is what you can see here on the virtual uh, watershed for which we applied the cell model of the D-skin. So it's a half square kilometers watershed exposed to uh, rainfall of a constant intensity of 40 millimeters per hour for 45 minutes. So the uh, rainfall, the total cumulative rainfall was 30 millimeters. And this is the runoff you get if there is unsealed soil uh, assumption on the watershed. It's about two or three millimeters, so it's 10% of the rainfall. 1% uh, of the rain, 10% of the rain. It's four because of the hour. And then the, for the dynamic sealing, it's five times what you got for the unsealed soil. And if the, all the watershed is already sealed by previous uh, rainfall condition, then you can get almost two thirds of the rainfall flowing as runoff at the outlet. Now the uh, soil sealing, uh, the soil, the seal layer, when it is uh, uh, present at the soil surface, apparently affect also evaporation. This is experimental data of Bressler and Camper from 1970. The blue line is cumulative evaporation from soil columns that were uh, just uh, saturated, and the red uh, ones were soil columns saturated after being exposed to rainfall of high kinetic energy, and we see that uh, there is uh, an effect of uh, the sea layer uh, reducing the total evaporation. We can also look at a profile of uh, solving uh, Richard's equation for evaporation during the part where it can be applied when the soil is uh, still wet, let's say during uh, stage one evaporation, now that we know about evaporation after the talk of Danny, and we can see that for an uh, homogeneous soil profile, the water content distribution will move left to the left with time, but will remain more or less uh, constant with that up to a certain uh, point, while when we have a sea layer at the soil surface, what is mainly providing the water for evaporation is the water contained in the uh, very wet, uh, thin, or uh, fine material uh, layer, and therefore, at some point, this layer draws dry first and prevents further evaporation from the system. This is at least what we think. Uh, from the experimental uh, data of uh, Shai, we have reprodu reproduced this phenomena. He used soil uh, buckets, and you see also the effect of drying. So these two soil surfaces, this is for unsealed soil, and this is for uh, Sealed soil, you can see the big difference in the appearance of the soil surface when it uh, dries out. And uh, now that we have uh, a conceptual model of the soil layer, and that based on that conceptual model of the soil layer, we can determine uh, the hydraulic properties of this uh, uh, layer, we can go to uh, modelization of rainfall infiltration runoff relationship at the plot scale, this is what we did with the help of uh, Li Chen. So we use data from the runoff plots of uh, Kosovsky. It's four meter by 20 meter, situated very close to here in the ETR of Lehavim that you have uh, seen yesterday in the talk of Tal. This is the topography of this uh, uh, slope, and this is the vegetation patches that were reproduced from uh, pi aerial pictures of 1994 uh, uh, of the, uh, the, the experimental plots. So this is the plots we used to uh, check or to uh, evaluate the rainfall infiltration runoff uh, relationship using a model that has two modules, an infiltration module and a runoff module that are coupled. The infiltration and the redistribution are simulated using an analytical model based on the work of Smith et al. and Corradini et al. 
and we uh, check that uh, analytical model uh, against hundreds numerical solution, and you can see that for a given uh, rainfall season, there is practically no difference between the two solutions. And uh, the rainfall, the runoff uh, module is a 2D diffusion wave uh, model. It is coupled with the infiltration, so that infiltration is the same part of the, the equation. And we validate it against the total runoff from the plots under two different natural rainstorms. And we see that in both for the event number one and the event number two, we more or less reproduce the runoff depth. So based on this validation, we went further to uh, uh, simulate the 2D distribution of infiltration runoff in the plot. So we, we, we consider different cases. This is the case where the slope is a planar sealed slope. When the, when the uh, plot was unsealed, there was no runoff at all. So if you run the simulation on a plot that has no seal on it, there is no runoff. And since we see that runoff was produced, then we assume that we have to take into account the seal layer. The planar uh, seal slope has no microtopography on it, and it's a flat plane. And here we have a constant infiltration rate like it should be. When you consider a natural seal slope plus the vegetation, and this is the map of the vegetation, the natural seal slope means you add the microtopography that I showed you previously with the DM. Then we see that we have a spatial distribution of the cumulative infiltration where we have much higher infiltration very uh, on uh, at the spots where we had uh, uh, vegetation uh, present. So when we look at the cumulative infiltration, uh, depending on the position along the slope, so this is uh, the, uh, the brown curves are for uh, bare soil, so independently of the position of the bare soil on the slope, there is practically the same cumulative infiltration, but when we consider the infiltration at the vegetation spots, then it depends where the vegetation is, so this is the cumulative infiltration at the top, and it's very similar to the bare soil, but as we go down along the slope, the vegetation at the, uh, the infiltration at the vegetation spot increases, and you can get a very high uh, infiltration rate uh, when vegetation is uh, present. If you look at the ratio between infiltration and rainfall, then you can uh, see the normal curves for the bare soil, where we have a constant infiltration of one, and then uh, a value that decreases because of the increase of the gradients. But when we consider vegetation, well then we have for the middle slope and the bottom, we can get ratios that are five to six times the, the rainfall. So the vegetation spot can be uh, feeded by five to six times more than the local rainfall that are uh, infiltrating in the bare patches around them. Uh, we can look also at the spatial distribution of the cumulative runoff, and we see that for the Pranar uh, seal slope, there is a constant uh, uh, cumulative uh, runoff. Uh, the, 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 these spots, that clear spots, are the rocks. And when we look at the vegetation, we see that where uh, there is vegetation, we have negative cumulative runoff. That means that here, water is uh, infiltrating from the bare soil to the uh, vegetation uh, locations. If we consider the impact of the surface attributes on the cumulative runoff, then we have uh, uh, four cases. The case, the case one, which is the red uh, curve, is the planar seed slope, and we get the reference curve. When we add to this planar uh, curve microtopography, we see that this is no much effect on the cumulative runoff, but when we add vegetation, this is where we reduce the runoff by uh, uh, a factor or, uh, of four or five. That means that vegetation is an important element that uh, rule the runoff uh, at the level of the uh, plot at least. 
And we can also uh, look at the, or at, this is a preliminary result on the effect of, of the soil uh, seal on erosion. Uh, the stream power, which is defined here uh, as a function of slope and uh, unit discharge of runoff, could be a good predictor for uh, uh, unit sediment according to Nearing et al. So based on that, we can uh, look at the impact on erosion. So this is the planar seed slope, and we see that erosion is increasing with the slope almost uh, uniformly. When we add the microtopography in this case, we see that then the microtopography has a very, very dramatic impact on uh, erosion, and we see that we have formation of rills with uh, very high uh, spots of high erosion at the bottom of the slope. And when we add the vegetation, the impact, the fingerprint of the microtopography is still pres present, but it's, uh, there are areas that are not eroded at all, or practically not. And this is because of the infiltration of the runoff that is, uh, 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 that is feeding the, the vegetation. From the uh, plot, from the plot, uh, we move to the hill slope, and this is the Leavim LTR that you have seen previously. It is a dry region between 240 to 370 millimeter per year. We uh, consider that hill slope, uh, and we uh, de de define it. Uh, we define its physical properties in, with extensive measurements. We uh, characterize uh, cells, and we aggregate uh, 1D solution uh, through this uh, 8,000 cells to recreate, to simulate the spatial and the temporal variability of uh, the water content. And we see here that for a given uh, season of 2010, 2011, we could represent uh, quite well the water content that was measured in all these green spots if we assume that a seal layer was added to the and sealed the soil that is the blue, the blue line. Based on that, we could look at the uh, water storage in the root zone. And what we see is that for uh, this season, for example, which is a wet season, we have red areas where the water storage in the sealed system is higher than in the unsealed one. And when there is a lot of uh, rainfall, when it is a wet period, it's the, con the contrary, it's the blue, the blue uh, strip. So in some cases, the sea layer <coughs> increased the water storage in the root zone, while in other conditions, it's the opposite. If we look at a dry season, we get the same result. This is the water storage in the root zone of a seal that had seed hills up at the end of a dry season, 203 millimeters per year. And we see that in the seal system, we have more uh, water storage in uh, the hill slope than if the, sealed, uh, the system was assumed to be unsealed, so that uh, reduced evaporation compensates for the loss of infiltration uh, in some cases, and then the seal layer can enhance water conservation in, in the soil uh, profile. So if we conclude, uh, the soil surface sealing uh, do, reduces do reduce infiltration and evaporation and increase uh, runoff. The seal bare soil generally generate overland flow that irrigates the vegetation. And as we go along the slope, the, this uh, effect is more and more uh, important. Uh, and, and, and this is uh, what uh, 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 permits the, the vegetation to uh, establish. Under certain conditions, the sea layer can also enhance water conservation in the soil profile so that in uh, depending on the physical properties of the site, the rainfall regime, and the climatic condition, we can find the sea layer acting as a positive factor that uh, st not stop, but decelerate uh, desertification rather than uh, uh, what was generally uh, thought about. And it can contribute to the establishment and to the development of the vegetation in those semi-arid uh, conditions. The financing bodies, you know about that. I want to add the Chief Scientist Fund of the Israeli Ministry of Agriculture. And uh, thank you for... Uh,
Um, uh, arid regions uh, tend to be covered also by biogenic soil crusts like cyanobacteria. Uh, do you, have you studied that or do you, can you estimate what is the relative roles of physical and uh, biogenic crusts? So I, I haven't worked on that uh, specifically, but if we uh, assume that dust crust act also uh, <coughs> as a reducing factor of the uh, hydraulic conductivity because of weight 